Uh, everybody, welcome back to the Spurs 9501 podcast. This is Ray from London. I've got Cam, Steve and Jan with me on the podcast. We're here to discuss the 2-0 home win with West Bromwich Albion after a long time without a, a win in the Premier League. Uh, let me quickly go through the teams for you. So the Tottenham team was Lloris in goal, Aurier, Alderweireld, Sanchez, Davies, Hoybieg, Undombele, Lucas, Lamella, Sun and Kane. Uh, let's go over now to Cam in sunny Florida. Can you give us a bit of a history with our traditional bogey team, West Bromwich Albion? Yes. I mean, just to start off with, to say that if we did win today, which we, we all know we did, um, it will be the first time since 2011-12 season when Harry Redmond was in charge that we've done the double over West Brom. So I'll keep it with West Brom. I did before and the last time we played them when we were away. But interestingly, just to say that uh, um, uh, in all the games that Allardyce has played against uh, Mourinho, which is, uh, today was the 13th, he's had three draws and 10 losses. So I've never beaten Mourinho at any of his clubs before. Um, if we had lost today at home, three games in a row would have been a record for um, um, Mourinho at all, because he's never lost two consecutive games at home at any club, which he broke last uh, um, after we lost to Chelsea. I think the best, the most interesting stat today is obviously Harry Kane becoming joint second highest goal scorer for Tottenham with 208 goals in the history. Long may that continue. And who's the other? Guy, who's the other guy who scored it? Can you tell our viewers and our listeners? Bobby Smith. Bobby, yeah, Smith. Bobby Smith. And then there's Jimmy Greaves at the top with, I think, 268 goals. So he's got another 60 to go before he gets to uh, um, to, to Jimmy's record. I mean, if he stays another couple of seasons, he can probably do it. Let's hope he does. Okay. Uh, in, in relation to the game today itself. Oh, I haven't started on the game. I wanted to mention something else before we come to the yeah, game, Cam. Sure. You're getting in there a bit early as usual. You've got some vocal yeah. thoughts. I know that. I just wanted... no, I've got to get stats for the game. Oh, sorry. Sorry, stats on the game. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, 65, well, 66% well, possession for Tottenham. So our possession rates in the last few games, albeit we have been playing well, has been going up. Uh, we had a total of 13 shots. They had four. Um, so we had six on target. They had one on target, which I'm sure we're going to talk about. We had um, three, two clear-cut chances that we didn't take. Eight corners for us, none for uh, West Brom. Our tackling was better, 64%. There's only 52, um, but they won most of the aerial duels at 64%. We only won 36%. Uh, we committed more fouls. They got two yellow cards. We got one yellow card. But overall, I mean, the stats do look pretty good for us. Okay, excellent. I just wanted to tell our listeners and our viewers that we, with that win now, we've moved into seventh place in the Premier League on 36 points. So we've gone above Chelsea, which is good news. Uh, a goal difference of plus 14. So that's excellent. And uh, we're moving up the table now, so hopefully this is the start of a of a good run for us. So, okay, let's start talking about the match. I'm going to come to Steve first. Steve, tell us uh, tell us your thoughts about the formation. It's obviously a four two three one with uh, Lamella and Lucas on the basis of their good introduction in Chelsea coming into the match, and then obviously um, Dyer's dropped for uh, Sanchez. So, give us your thoughts on the team, Steve. Well, um, I think in terms of formation, we sort of started with the formation that we would normally use uh, with with about 20 minutes to half an hour to go when we were chasing the game, um, rather than starting off as tends to be, sort of appears to be an ultra-defensive um, formation. So I was pleased, actually. I'm pleased with that formation. Um, first, my first thought is um, about Kane. I thought, this is too early. Why have they brought him back? I thought, my God, this means he's going to be out for the rest of the season when one of the, um, you know, bullish players from West Brom clatter into him. So I was really worried about that. And I was wincing every time he went into a challenge. However, he got through the game and he showed he has class, which no one else has. Okay. Um, I think another sort of takeaway from the game was that um, the value of starting Mora over Bergwijn. I mean, I know this was only West Brom. Yeah. But Mora's work rate, his commitment... His um, willingness to take the odd chance really showed. I showed him way above Bergwijn, I think, in a starting starting position. Sasuka was dropped as well. Um, obviously, Dyer, um, Sanchez coming in never fills me with immense amount of confidence, and we have to bear in mind we were playing West Brom. But I thought he played okay. He probably made a couple of silly mistakes where he gave the ball away too easily. Um, I still think as a team. We hang on to the ball too long and we don't hit that ball crisply into our own uh, teammates' feet. 
we tend to bobble it, play it just behind. We were still doing that. And we can't do that against better teams. We're going to have to up our game in terms of our passing ability. I'm starting to get a wee bit fed up with Holberg coming back and collecting the ball from three feet away from his own centre-halves for turning. Having said that, he did put a lovely ball through, I think it was him, yeah. for um, Son's goal, which was good. Okay. Um, I think as well, in the first half, Kane probably could have had two goals. And I yeah. think under other circumstances, he would have had two, which means we would have walk, walked away with a hat-trick today. But in overall terms, I think it was obviously a much better performance. Uh, we got 60-plus percent of possession, I think, which is what we ought to be aiming for, I think, rather than trying to hit everyone on the break. Um, West Brom are dire. They are a bad team. There's no two ways about that. Although they did bring, I think, was it Pereira on towards the end, who seemed to have a little bit of something we'll about come, him. But that we'll was, come back to that, Steve, about West Brom being a bad team. We'll come back to that. But um, yeah. thanks for your views on that. Um, yeah. Jam, I'm going to come to you now. Do you think um, Lamella and Lucas actually did enough to be included in, in, in the starting lineup today? And how do you think Lamella did? And Lucas oh, as well. I, I was I was surprised to see them there. Sorry, I mean uh, not not surprised because I mean we had to change something. We had to the, things have been so poor. There there needed to be some some fire lit somewhere. Um, you know I'm surprised it was Lamella, but but Jose stuck with him and and I thought he did all right today. He played well, um, brought some energy. Uh, you know I I don't know who else would have done that. Um, Lucas was also a good addition in, instead of Bergwijn, um, as as Steve said. His his willingness to shoot sometimes, whereas Bergwijn always seems really scared to shoot. He's always scared to dribble. You know, Bergwijn feels like he need, he knows what he has to do and he's going to just do that and do nothing else. Whereas uh, Lucas is not afraid to you know be a little more expressive, which is good. Um, yeah. As we said, though, it was West Brom. I think we talked a few weeks ago about playing Championship clubs is where our level is at right now, and you know they're they're essentially going to be a Championship club soon. Yeah. Okay. Great. I mean, I'm going to be a, be a bit of a um bit of a devil's advocate here because and i'm going to come to you cam in a minute but hear me out on this one um they scored two goals or all right they were offside but if their striker had a bit of nous and had got himself on side could easily have been a 2-2 game they had another header at the end that Loris saved i think the whole of the ball didn't cross the line you know i think it's okay steve saying yeah mora and jam saying mora gives us a lot going forward he didn't give us that much going back and bergwijn would have you know been a better Better. We need a cross between Bergwijn and Mora, really. Somebody does forward and back. So, although I agree, Mora gave a lot, a lot going forward. I really liked his forward runs and trying to beat players and creating things. He didn't give us a lot on the back. And Davis, again, was left big time exposed. They were always coming down Davis's side. And I think that guy needs a rest. And we can't wait for Regulon to come back sooner than later. So, Cam, give us your thoughts. Well, I mean, thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, I think that... Um... I just want to, before I say anything, I'd like to just say that last five games, we've lost three, one, two. We've lost to Liverpool, Chelsea and Brighton. And we've beaten Sheffield United and we've beaten West Brom. So um, uh, both of those teams will be relegated at the end of this season without a doubt. So let's be very clear about where we're at here. But we yeah. get too hurried away. As I just said, West Brom could have had two goals if the striker wasn't another Inzaghi and born offside, yeah. And, uh, I mean, you know, those offside goals are all very marginal. I mean, you know, our play was pretty poor at that stage. I thought that overall, um, um, the fact that we didn't start the game as we do with against every single team, which is playing as if we're 3-0 up and we're hoping for you know, five minutes to go, so we're just going to sit back and defend. Um, we start the game like that one, um, as we did against Chelsea. I didn't see, as they said in The Guardian, the zombie football, at least, this time. And we weren't walking around like zombies. I mean, anything that showed any energy was better than anything we've done before. Mm -hmm. What hit me about watching all the games yesterday, every single team I watched yesterday played with a high tempo, high energy, crisp passing, and moved the ball around well. I mean, um, and you couldn't say that about Tottenham. At least today, we looked like a football team. I know it sounds really bizarre thing to say, but actually today, we actually looked like we were playing some football rather than just uh, um, literally being a bunch of zombies on the, on, on the field. So that in itself was refreshing. Having said that, is that good enough? Probably not. And I thought that um, in the first half, the performance was that rusty. Maybe you could say that um, Kane was a bit, still playing a bit rusty. He should have taken some of his chances. Um, Don had a good chance too. Uh, and uh, um, I don't know. I think that Mora did add more to the team. I would rather see Mora making runs and defending less 
than uh, um, sitting back in the back five, six, seven, or eight and uh, playing like a headless chicken, right? I was, for me, it would be much better. I'd rather them having a few chances and us playing some football than playing uh, zombie football with the tw 10 at the back. So yeah. in that sense, I do disagree with you. I think that Moro did give us a bit more energy. And that's not so did Lamella. I mean, um, the fact that we, we're having to talk about Lamella and uh, Moro bringing some energy to the team tells us exactly where we're at today, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, going back to Steve's points, I think Steve made a really good point about Hoybier going back to like three meter, three centimeters from his centre backs. I mean, it's an over exaggeration. Collecting the ball, but that leaves a void in midfield. Then, but, and because you know um, West Brom had well, playing a four three three, that sometimes we were outnumbered. Does really Hoybier need to come that deep to collect the ball? Uh, can't our centre backs pass it out? I mean, I think Toby's tried some long passes today. You know, why is he coming so deep, Cam? Well, I mean, I think that's the way that Mourinho structured the team and set him up to do that, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I think that you're absolutely right. I mean, we, uh, the team, I believe, probably played much against Mourinho's wishes by wanting to uh, move forward faster yeah. and Kane um, uh, pushing us up a bit more because we've never really, apart from today, played that far up on the pitch. And I think Hoibier is sort of stuck in the middle between what do we do? Does he play up or does he play the way that uh, um, uh, Mourinho wants him to play? Having said that, it's, it's great to see that we finally seen sense and we put Toby as our number one defender back yeah, yeah, into yeah. where he is. Because that was good to see. Yeah. That, as Steve and everyone said, should be the first name on the team sheet if he's fit. Yeah. Steve, I want to come to you. What about Ben Davis at left back? You know, I know we're all praising, we want to know great, but against a better team with the better wingers, the better players, he could have been really badly exposed like he was against Chelsea. I mean, is there anything we can do in that left-back position? Well, I mean, as we said earlier, I think we're waking, waiting for... Um, uh, yeah, but until regular, to two or two, he's two or three weeks away from... So what can we yeah, do? So, I mean, I don't think there's... Um, uh, there's there's not, no other choice. Did we, we play Tanganga there, I think, in one game? I can't remember. Yeah, why um, can't we play Tanganga there, left-back? Yeah, um, clearly uh, Mourinho doesn't trust him enough. Uh, I don't think Davis did too badly. Um, he is quite good in the air. He is combative. He lacks pace and he delays with the pass, but then quite a few of them do. Um, I think West Brom probably missed a trick, not pushing up more than they did. Um, I mean, on the other side, Aurea probably had more uh, attacking play than I've seen him all season. Mm. Um, I, I think people criticise Ben Davis a wee bit unduly because I think he does try and defend. Um, I think he lacks pace. And he is hesitant, um, but I don't think there's an automatic replacement that we have for him at the moment. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and I mean, on a, maybe a couple of other points I could make as well is I think West Brom played our, into our hands because they, I think they should have said, look, Spurs have been on the ropes the last three games. We should give this a go. You know, mm -hmm. we might as well lose four 0 rather than you know. That's not the Allardyce way, is it? That's not the Allardyce no, way. No, but um, no. I mean, it's just I don't know. They, they just did. They didn't do that. They should have done. I think we we appeared a bit surprised at times about the amount of possession we had, um, and um, and you know, panicked a wee bit. And if Sanchez got over the halfway line, then the, the nosebleed started. Um, so that that was a shame. Um, I thought and, and Dombele. Um, didn't have a fantastic game and I think he picks the ball up far too deep. I don't know fully what role he's been given. It appears to be a roving role. You can play anywhere you like, but I think he gets the ball far too deep and then he's, he's likely to lose possession, even though he's very skillful. I would like him to see in, be in the last third making things happen. Um, that's the sort of takeaway, if you like, um, um, from that. Okay. But in terms of your final point about Ben Davis, there's not a natural replacement. I think we have to sort of bear with him and try and... Um, cover him as best we can. What about Dennis Cherkin from the, you know, he's had rave reviews. He's been training with the first team, the young guy from the academy. What about giving him I, a chance? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with that, with him. But I mean, at, at times in the last three games, I'd have said we not replaced the whole team with academy players true, yeah. um, just to give them, um, you, you do think <laughs> there must be someone yeah. in the club who, is, who can pass a ball and um, clear a ball and, you know, make the right decision. I'll come to you in a minute, Cam. Jam, talk about your favourite player, Serge Aurier. I thought he had a really good game today. Again, we have to preface that with it's the bottom team. They're not great. But despite that, I thought he did some good stuff. What do you think, uh, Jam? I, I think I think Serge uh, was probably also one of our better players against Chelsea too. Yeah. Um, so it's good good to see he's at least, uh, you know, from that Liverpool game when he walked off or stormed off or whatever happened at halftime that day. Uh, uh, you know, at least Mourinho and him have had some sort of discussion and he's, he's working hard. 
and that's good to see. Um, so you know, that's that's positive. I, uh, yeah. He's also like same with Ben Davis at the moment. I would say our only option in those positions, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. you know, Doki has just not done it. Yeah. So um, and also going back to the Ben Davis situation, it's like I would love to see a youngster come in and replace him because I think I feel like a lot of teams see that as our, our you know our left hand side there as our main weakness and that that's where they have been attacking. And this is yeah, this is the big problem we have got now because we let. Um, Jan Vertonghen go. Normally, Jan could go to left back. Yeah, that's true. Play as a left back. We don't have Jan. He's got even less pace than Ben Davis. Though. Yeah, but he's got his positioning is a lot better yeah. and he can defend a lot better. Yeah. Mm. But Cam, how do you think uh, Eric Lamella did? I know you said he did well, and I think he did well in the beginning. But then he seemed tended to fade out, and then again he got himself stupidly booked and they had to take him off because he could have got sent off. Well, how did you think he did, Cam? Do you think he deserves another chance as a start in the next match? I do. I mean, just before that, can I just say one thing very controversial? Always, mate, always. What about Danny Rose? Danny Rose, is, he can't play now. He's not been put into the, li the, the squads. He cannot play now. He was what, about three seasons ago. He was the best left back in the Premier League. Um, yes, three seasons ago, we're talking about now. Yeah, but I mean, he can't be any worse than what we've got. I mean, you know, he played for uh, Newcastle last year. He did pretty well, I thought. I mean, I'm just saying, it just all seems ridiculous that you're paying this guy to sit there didn't even give him a shirt number compared to some of the people who got the shirt number. And when we desperately need somebody in that position, we can't even play him. I mean, that just shows, again, it goes back to the coach, doesn't it? And he'd be so yeah. headed, pig headed is all I can say. Uh, in relation to uh, Lamella, Lamella's probably, and I think you'll all agree, the most frustrating player that we have at Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, by far, right? Can be brilliant, can do some stuff that is brilliant, and then he just loses it, completely loses his head, loses everything, right? goes in, chops people down. Sometimes you need that, especially what he did against Chelsea. I think he broke them up in the second half. Did we need it so much against West Brom? Because West Brom was a team, uh, I think, you know, you said this earlier, was a team where yeah, Mourinho saying, we don't want the ball. Sam Allardyce saying, I'm sorry, but we want it even less than you do. <laughs> so uh, I was sitting there like, why are you giving us the ball? We, we, got, the, no, we, we, got, the, we got the ball back before, didn't we, Cam? We yeah, it was. I mean, it, it was a bit like dodgeball to me rather yeah. than football because it was everyone saying, what the hell? 60% of the is not how we play. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think in tactics, probably Allardyce won the game because his tactics were never having the ball and the opposition have it sort of work and I think that that might have frustrated uh, Lamella a bit because I mean he had the ball more than he needed and he has a have very bad habit of losing the ball very much in critical places. Yes. Same yes. thing with Ndombele. Ndombele has the ball and keeps the ball very well but his passing decisions are so bad, yeah. they're so bad that they, have, that they just it makes you wonder. It really, you sit there and think you're supposed to 60 million pound player and you can't pass the ball. Yeah, but you were raving about him a few weeks ago, saying he's the best thing since sliced bread. So, what's happened to him then? I plead the fifth. I don't think that was me. Yeah, it was you anyway. But Steve, <laughs> Steve, I don't think we should underestimate it. Everybody's saying Cam, saying Jam, saying oh, he's only West Brom. I'm telling you, the couple of offside, marginal offside divisions, it could have been two-two. So don't underestimate the the gravity of this win. It's a really good win, and it could easily have been two-two, or you know, one-one or whatever. So. Is it, what do you think about that? Well, I think I think I think that's absolutely right. But I think you have to sort of balance that out with the other chances that we had as well. Yeah. So in the first half, I think if normal service had been fully resumed, we, um, uh, Kane would have got two goals in the first half, and he didn't. So I, I, I would sort of balance that out. And also, playing offside is part of the game. Yeah. Having yeah, yeah. said that, I won't in any way suggest that's what Sanchez was doing. If you look at that, if you look at it on both occasions, if you look at it, the strike actually pushes him to make himself offside. If he hadn't got <laughs> Sanchez, he would have onside. <laughs> it's crazy, really. So let's okay, so overall, you know, I think our takeaway is good win, bottom team, but so what? We needed a win, we got it. Is this the um Cam, let me come to you. Is this your first starting eleven for the next Match against Everton? Well, no, it's not. I mean, again, we, 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 you know, we're not addressing the elephant in the room here, are we? That's we're not talking. This is, a, this is a no bail area. This is a no bail zone. No, oh, but I mean, well, it's, 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 it's Delhi Alley as well, of course. No Delhi Alley, no Gareth Bale, no nothing. And we always say 
we're losing 1-0, why did he bring Bale on? Well, I want to turn that on his head and say we're winning 2-0 and you bring Bergwijn on who has absolutely added absolutely nothing. I disagree with you on that. If you I want to disagree with you, no, he don't. Bergwijn adds a lot more than Bale. To get a bit of confidence and see how we could perform. I sure well, that Berg, Bergwijn needs confidence. He's been playing well ever since that Liverpool match. He's been ostracised by everybody, but he's playing well. You don't see the work. You don't see the work that Bergwijn does in defence, cutting out. It was a match against Chelsea when um, Rudiger beat three or four players, and Bergwijn came and stopped him before he got to the penalty area. You know, you missed those. I'm little... saying it all. Though. Rudiger is getting into our penalty area. That's how bad we were against them. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gareth Bale. I mean, listen, Cam. I'm going to come to you, and then I'm going to come to Jam. How many chances do you want this guy to have? He actually started the match. One of the few matches that did nothing. He had to take he him off. The match he doesn't want to. Hold on. Let me finish. He doesn't want to go into tackles. He's not running back. He's not scoring goals. What, what's the reason for having Gareth Bale on the pitch? Everybody was playing badly in that game. No, 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 no. So that's even more reason for him to stand out and play better. I mean, all right, let's just look at what you're saying because I want to go back to uh, the last uh, um, 30 minutes of the game, right? Our last 30 minutes of the game, we were winning 2-0 and we reverted back to form. We, uh, we tried, we didn't go for a three, we didn't go for four, we didn't go for anything. We just sat back again, passed the ball out. If any other team had been there, they would have created at least 10, 15 chances. But West Brom, since they didn't want the ball either, didn't really create that much. But um, we did exactly what we always do, get two goals and sit back and, and hope for the best. And I think that against any other team, that would have been wrong. I think if we brought someone like Bale on, who maybe would have uh, had a bit more freedom because he had two goal cushion behind him, right? To move forward and do oh, something. No. <laughs> it might have made a difference. But I mean, that's my opinion. This is more than ridiculous. I'm going to come to you now, Jam. Every time Bale, you know, he, he's got a two goal cushion, so he's going to provide. Oh, he hasn't had a chance to provide. Come on, Jam. Yeah. Why don't you respond I mean, to that? I, I agree with you, with you, Ray. I don't think Bale's going to bring it at any point. You know, um, his confidence is gone. Other than his confidence, I don't think he's interested. You know, he just doesn't seem too interested. Um, I, feel, I feel like he's happy to go back to Madrid and make them suffer for another year till his contract's done. You know, and and I think he's happy to have had this little this little vacation away at Tottenham. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think that's about as far as as yeah. Bale goes. Yeah. What do you think on Bale, Steve? What's your take on him? Well, I mean, I don't. I think you know, returning as he has done is probably the wrong the wrong thing. He seems to me to be playing. Um, very much sort of within himself. He doesn't want to strain to, I think he's worried about probably more injuries. Uh, so he's sort of just playing in a very controlled way. But I almost thought, why not bring him on the last half hour? Get Take off and Dombele and tell, to, tell Bale, look, you know, run yourself into the ground for half an hour in that position, that sort of roving position. You can go where you like. It's already happening with Ndombele. Let's see what happens with you. So maybe we should have tried something like that. But he sort of he seems to be playing football with you know one hand tied behind his back. That's how I, that's the sense I have. I would have taken off uh, Harry Kane and brought Vinicius on and get Vinicius is uh, get his uh, confidence up. Get him in front of the game. Maybe he could have got a goal. I think that's more important. Maybe. Gareth Bale Maybe. had his chance against Brighton. He started from the first. He started from the beginning. Got had that roving thing and did nothing. We can't. Yeah. We're not in the situation where we can afford a player to be a passenger for sixty minutes, Steve. Yeah. That's my view anyway. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can say something. Players, players have been passengers at varying stages throughout this entire season, yeah. haven't they? Really. I mean, Just yeah. Yeah. Some cam on bail, and then we'll move. We'll close yeah. it off. I mean, I've, I've most of the team look like the, the Walking Dead. I'm surprised that you're talking about passengers. I mean, I'd take a passenger over a dead. This is the whole point. That, they were all zombies against Chelsea. So the whole point, Cam's argument around Bale is everybody's just as bad, but that's not a valid argument. He needs to add game. value. He needs that to add value. Game. I thought, yeah, he, he given a few more games, he could have um, uh, done something. I would have given him half an hour, just like they said. What do you say about that, Jam? I mean, let's see what he has to say. I think Bale is still got a lot of chances to play because we have. Uh, he'll, he'll probably play against Everton, whether he starts or he comes on as a sub. And then we have Europa League coming up in a couple of weeks, and he's definitely going to be playing. I Listen, don't, don't get me wrong. Him not playing. There's nobody on this earth who wouldn't want more Gareth Bale to succeed than me. I'm a big Gareth Bale fan. But I think he's been given enough chances. I mean, we're in the we're in do or die we're in do or die situation. Rumors in UK were that if Mourinho loses this match, it could be time up for him. So Mourinho's in self-preservation mode. He's not going to bring on somebody who's not going to deliver. Well, let's talk about that too. 
Yeah, let's talk about it. What do you think about Mourinho's position, Cam? Well, I think that, like I said, five games, three losses, two wins against the two bottom teams. <coughs> We've now got a number of big games coming up this week. We've got Everton in the FA Cup. If that's gone, let's say, because the way Everton played against Manchester United yesterday, that's going to be good. They're a good team. They're a good, good team, right? Hammers is on fire, isn't it? Hammers Rodriguez is on fire, yeah. I mean, if the, the front, all the front players are on fire. Um, then we've got Manchester City after that. Uh, you talk about Ben Davis against Manchester City running at him. You know, I mean, I don't know what to say. There is really not much to say. But if you sit back like we have done in the, against Chelsea and everybody else, and Chelsea are probably the worst team we've played out of the five. Yeah. Yeah. They were awful. The chance, they didn't take the chances. But City will destroy us. Absolutely destroy us, and I'm very, very worried about that. So, what happens after those two games? The little bit of euphoria that we've got today from beating West Brom, and judging by the games that we've got to go, we've still got to go to Leicester, we've still got to go to Arsenal, right? Um, uh, and we've got, we have, you know, we've got some, t- we've got Man United coming to Spurs, we've got some tough games coming up. We've got to go to City. Um, the, question, the, question, the question is, what is your future of Mourinho? I think he's got to have some, if he doesn't change his tactics drastically, which to be fair, he did change them sometime today, even though I thought we were a bit too narrow. Uh, I don't see any future for Mourinho. Okay, Steve, what do you think the future for Mourinho is? Uh, I don't see it long term. I think there are three factors really which are keeping him there which is no crowd, uh, the fact of the, the compensation that would have to be paid if he was given the boot, yeah. um, and the fact he's in three cups. Um, yeah. And if he does produce something from one of the cups, then perhaps, I mean, if he won the Europa League, which would give us a place in the Champions League, I think he'll definitely stay. Otherwise, I think it, they're probably going to see him out at least until the end of the season. But they're still going to have to pay him off if that's the case. Uh, Jam? Um we all know Daniel Levy very well. I don't think he's going to go anywhere anytime soon. Unless, you know, let's say we get knocked out by Everton and then we, we lose our first, uh, we, we get knocked out of the Europa League right off the bat. Um, then he'll probably be gone in the summer. Probably not, not, not earlier until then. But, um, guys- but long term, I see him having an opportunity to rebuild the team. You know, he's going to get given that chance, I think. But guys, hear me, you remember me out on this one. Is Daniel Levy so st- he knew First of all, he knew it was high risk to bring Mourinho in because he, he didn't do much at Man United, etc. He's very high risk. Is he really that stupid to give him a three-year deal at £15 million a year, knowing that it could blow up any time and he's going to have to pay him £30 million or whatever compensation? Don't you think there's going to be some clauses in there? If you don't reach top four, if you don't win something, then you know we can cancel by mutual consent. What do you think, Steve? And then I'll come to the other two. Uh- you would have thought they were there, but I mean, we just don't know, do we? We can speculate. There's been no, there appears to me to be no rumblings. He hasn't been given a vote of confidence, has he? That's the, normally the death knell of any uh, uh, any manager. We, we, it's all been quiet, really, I think, from the Levy front. But, I mean, um, so I hey, let me just... Levy's still happy with him because we're still in those cups. But let me just mention something, and I'll come to Cam in a minute. But Alistair Gold, who's a very you know good reporter, has got links into the... Uh, Spurs are saying that the, the hierarchy are not happy with the way he's playing. They're getting concerned, blah, blah, blah. And he's got a few games to turn it around. So there could be stuff happening that we don't know about. So, Cam, I mean, do you yeah. think Daniel Levy's stupid enough to give him a third, three-year deal without any conditions? Well, I think that the, the, what you've got to see is that Levy's been chasing Mourinho for years. And he's sort of like a Mourinho fan. He tried to get him when he left Chelsea the first time. I think he tried to get him again the second time. Um, and he's been after Mourinho for, for a long time. So I think Daniel Levy is um, a big Mourinho fan. And I, I believe that he was going to stick by his man because he, he got rid of The question is, what if Pochettino had stayed? Would he have turned us around? And uh, Levy made a very big decision by getting rid of Poch when he did and putting his money into... Um, Mourinho, when you do that, it's not mm-hmm. easy to eat humble pie and back off and say, oh, you know, I made a mistake a year and a half later. Because it's Hillary. He's going to have to stick by him because he's made his bed. I yeah, thought. I think it's, it's very telling in the Amazon documentary, Daniel Levy said there's only two there's only two managers in the Premier League who are, who are winners, and Jose Mourinho is one of them. So that tells you all you need to know about it, really, I think. Okay, guys, let's a uh, really good discussion on there. Let's um, just finish off now with... Um, 
predictions for Everton on Wednesday. I'm going to come to Jam first on this one. What's your prediction for Everton on Wednesday? I, I, I want to be very hopeful. I'm hoping Everton's style of play will, will allow us to be more expressive too. Um, at least on counters. We're so happy. I'm so happy to have came back. You know, I know it was it was tough. It was a tough decision to make having played him today, but man, I'm overjoyed. The team just looks way better with him there. Um, you know, I, I want to be I want to be positive. I, I think we can we can win it. I think it could be two one, two nil, maybe. Yep. Okay. Good, Steve. Uh, my heart says we'll win one nil. My head says we'll lose two one. So I'm going to go with my heart and say we're going to win one nil. Good man, Cam. We lose three one. Uh, okay, and you, okay, fine. What with the same team or a different team? Well, I think whatever team, because having seen the way that Everton have turned it around, they were playing very poorly about maybe a month ago or so. But um, uh, I think that the we're going to sit back, and when you start getting Richarlson and uh, <coughs> all their front players, um, uh, I forgot their stri- main striker's this name just slipped my mind. Well, Calvert Lewin, Calvert Lewin running at you, right? Very good in the air. Uh, as well. And um, I, I just can't see who's going to be able to, who are you going to put in the back? Sanchez, Dyer, apart from Toby can't do it all. And yeah, they make with Toby and Sanchez. Maybe I'll put Toby off. and Sanchez. Yeah, yeah because Rashad has got back. Okay, come to me now. I think, and you guys are not going to like this, but I think it's going to be 2-1 to Everton after extra time. I think it's going to be 1-1 full time and then Everton will nick it in extra time 2-1. I'm sorry to say that, but that's what I feel. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, we all hope. Well, we hope the top two are wrong and the bottom two are right. <laughs> anyway, come on, you Spurs, and um, we'll see yeah, you on yeah. the next podcast. So, th- to all our listeners, all our viewers, thank you for listening into the Spurs ninety five hundred one podcast. This is Ray in London, and it's goodbye from Cam. Goodbye, thanks. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Goodbye from Steve. Goodbye, goodbye guys. And it's, good- and it's goodbye from Jam in Connecticut. Goodbye, thank you. Come on, you Spurs. Bye bye. Come on, you Spurs. See you guys.